My name's Damien Johnson. Um, I drive the 1982 RA40 Celica GT that was campaigned back in 1982 to about 1986 by Doug Clark. Uh, built by Avanti Cars, it's essentially a Formula 2 structured chassis with a Celica body sitting on top. Uh, runs a six cylinder Holden red motor, dug and head, triple Webers, dry sump. Pretty much the top end of what it would have been back in, in that day, back in 82 to 84. It's suspension wise, it runs double wishbone suspension, essentially Formula 2 style suspension, a typical four link panard rod rear end, um, AP racing disc brakes all round. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much what was built back in the day to be yeah, at, the, at the high end of, of a car of this calibre. There's a sister car which is the John Burke car which is identical in construction but it runs a turbocharged Holden 6. So there's a lot of um, photographs around a lot of that because that car ran the full Australian Championship. Yeah. This car essentially only ran down the east coast. Yeah. So yeah, the, the two cars look identical. People yeah. send me photos, is this your car? No, that's the sister car. So yeah, this is 78, the, the other car was number 77 so they were same colour scheme, yeah. same, same sponsors and everything. We've got a lot of photos and um, a lot of information. There was a round at Surface Paradise Raceway before it all got closed down, where this car pretty much um, dominated that weekend, pretty much outright, which was, it was a very top of the top 10 sort of car, but this weekend it, it actually um, did really well. And I've got a lot of photos people have sent me and result sheets from, from that because yeah, it was, it was a very fast car around the flowing Surface Paradise track. So because the car has ran through so many, I suppose, decades, yeah. yeah, people always come up, I remember that car, that, is that the car that this bloke raced? Oh, I saw this car at this track or that track and I've got photos at home, I'll send them to you. And we're just, yeah, getting together a huge amount of photos and newspaper articles and it pops up in magazines, like old racing car news magazines, people will send me a page, oh, here it is here. And it's just amazing, the, the history of the car. Yeah. This is a poster from 1982 when they debuted the car. So Doug still, has Doug in the middle, so Doug yeah. still hangs around, all these guys still live in Grafton and whatever the next town south is. Yeah. So, and it was on the trailer, and I could only open the bonnet a little bit before I hit the tyre rack, and the mechanic guy goes, oh, can you open the bonnet, I just want to have a look. So I popped the bonnet up, and he got his, and he looked at it, looked at, and he went, this is the car. Yeah. I said, what, what do you mean this is the car? Oh, it's just things I did yeah. that only I know I've done. <laughs> and then he looked under the back, and he saw the, you know, the Avanti chassis under there, and he went, yeah, and he turned to Doug, and he goes, we never should have sold this car because they bought something else and went terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, but later on, I spoke to Doug and I said, what, what was he looking for under the bonnet yeah. out of curiosity? Yeah. It was that big aluminium plate behind the brakes. Yeah. Because when they first built the car, it all flexed. Ah, okay. So he made this plate up and that's yeah. what he was looking for. And there's an air duct. Yeah. He put that on there. So he, that's the two sort of things he was looking he for. Because those the things, you, yeah. if you built a, a replica, you wouldn't know that's no. what it had. To drive this car the way it is, you can see why it was so successful back in the day. It's just so forgiving, and the more you lean on it, the more it gives back to you. And we haven't found the line as yet, because the cars are so valuable, you don't really want to throw them down the fence. So, But we're slowly sneaking up on it. Like this weekend, we're going quicker and quicker, just leaning more and more on the car and finding its strengths and weaknesses. And like under brakes and power down, it's just, I wish the Tirana would do it. Like yeah. it's just, it's a fantastic car. The engine that's in it is, is, is fairly, a fairly basic engine combination, pretty much what was high end back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, we, do, we did have plans to build a, a, you know, a, big, a big engine for it, but putting modern technology into it takes away from how the cars ran back in the day, because all the things like roller camshafts, they weren't available back yeah. in the mid 80s. So rather than go and build a big horsepower engine, it would be fun because it would be a lot faster, but it's not going to be truly what the car was when it ran. Yeah, all the cars we've got here are true, genuine sports sedans from the period. Like, you know, we brought the Tirana over a few times. It's historic by shape, but not by 
specification. Yeah. So it sort of took away a little bit from the genuine cars that were here. So when we purchased this, you know, we often get, oh, do you want to bring the Toronto and put somebody else in? It's like, no, that's that's a later car, yeah. whereas this is the true car of the period, which which goes with what we're trying to do. Yeah. Oh, look, you know, there's you know, there's my dad, yeah. you know, Murray. You know, we, you know, it's, it's a it's a project we took on. Um, the Tirana we had um, with my late wife Andrea. Yeah. This car was sort of a, a, at a point where we could not forget the past, but race with a new future, have some fun. And we always think about it. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, but it's just great. And like you know, Simon Fitzner, like the, the work he has done behind the scenes to get us to this point, and it's growing. Like you know, we're trying to have a have a go at Winton at the historics and like we're looking at maybe 35 40 cars we don't know how we're going to handle mm. that many cars so yeah what, what started off as sort of you know a dozen of us this weekend we're nearly at 30 cars and Winton we're looking at maybe 35 to 40 cars and there are more cars out there it's amazing cars that have actually survived and not been you know cut up for parts yeah. and thrown at the tip. Mm.